Welcome back. This time we're looking at 40 games we loved on the Commodore Amiga. So then this line of computers that appeared in the late 80s and throughout the early 90s as well, these machines came with all sorts of proprietary chipsets with graphics and sound capabilities we just hadn't seen before or heard. And it all came at an acceptable price. Oh, and I nearly forgot, it was a massive success. You can't beat the 80s or 90s, especially the advertisements. And if anybody's foolish enough to argue otherwise, to understand them, you just had to be there. Even the hairstyles. And unlike retro gaming, I don't think that hairstyle's ever coming back. But living in the 80s felt like a new dawn. It was exciting. Everybody felt like we were on the cusp of something big. And just when you thought the 80s were brilliant, then the 90s came along and blew it completely away. So I think it's safe to say that I personally lived through two of the best decades ever. Today is great, don't get me wrong, but it's all doom and gloom. All we had back then was Who Shot JR? Uh, a white Michael Jackson, one button joysticks, and for Christ's sake, we even celebrated materialism. It was as if the entire decade was deregulated. Now, Another World came out in 1991, and at the time, it was like a cinematic experience. It blew everybody away. And I kid you not, the animation felt years ahead. Now Carrier Command, wow. I first played this on the Amstrad CPC. It was probably around 1988. And trust me, that game was fantastic. It was brilliant. And it had the complexity of the 16-bit versions as well. But this is even better. And kept more than kept me burning the midnight oil. The only sad thing is it didn't really feel like it was taking advantage of the Amiga's capabilities that much. But it's a blaster's dream come true. Snow, rain, blistering sunshine, uh, tight controls and fast pace. Crazy Cars 3 has it all. And whenever I'm searching for that nostalgic buzz, Crazy Cars 3 is up there. It's in that pile of games that I think, hmm, which one should I play? I had this on the Amstrad CPC as well. It was a lot slower um, and it just didn't feel as uh, refined. But you couldn't complete the game, there was a bug at the end. You can get this on the Super Nintendo as well. And I think you can play it on the PC, but it's called Lamborghini and it's two player. Now I played um, Dungeon Master on the Atari ST originally, but um, it, I didn't really understand it if I'm honest, I was too young. But by the time this came out on the Amiga, I was an absolute wizard. And it blew my mind in comparison to the original Dungeon Master. And it's no secret, I spent a hell of a long time playing this. A friend of mine even has his original disc with all his save files on, where he built up a really powerful uh, party. Now I still love playing this. It's a bit slow compared to the PC version of the then day. But it was just easy to get into, no matter your level of experience. It was just simple and easy to get into and quick to play. But the progression was there for the true petrol head if needed. And I still wager, if you can get round Silverstone in this, with all the aids turned off, you can do it for real. Now all we need is a patch to relive the Abu Dhabi race between Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen. Uh, no, I'm joking. This is a difficult one to judge. It doesn't use the full entirety of the screen and the score panel on the right is just a little bit too big for my liking. But the game itself is fantastic to play. And if, like me, you're into your arcade conversions, they don't come any better than this. It's smooth, it's fast, more importantly, it's gauntlet too. And I say that because, sadly, Amiga owners never got the original. And if you've got the interface, you can play with up to four friends. Now, Golden Axe needs no introduction for the Commodore Amiga. You know, this arcade conversion to the Amiga shows that anything the Mega Drive can do, well, the Amiga can do as well. This plays just as good, if not better, than on the Sega Mega Drive. Oh my God, did you see that? That is pure filth. Or maybe it's just my mind. Oh God, I can't stop seeing it now. That's what you call a proper eye shag, and not in a good way. I, I need therapy now. <laughs> 
How have I not seen that before? You can't even refer to that or call that an easter egg. Oh, my eyes! I think this was the first game where I thought to myself, what happens if I stop the car and try to go around the other way, the wrong way around the track? Or just literally stop and park in the middle? The results were spectacular. For me, it's better than Stunt Car Racer. There, I've said it. And for the time, it was the best racing game money could buy. And although the PC original looked phenomenal, there was no sound. So another example where the Amiga betters the PC. Ah, Jimmy White Snooker. This is one I absolutely loved. For me, back in the day, uh, this was definitely the most realistic. You can't beat, though, going down a snooker hall, down to your local snooker hall, uh, having a few pints, meeting up with a few friends, and playing snooker. But back in the day, I was obviously underage and couldn't do that. So the next best place was at home. And this was great for playing with friends and family. Good old memories, good old times for me. Talk about Cloud9. I was at sixes and sevens with Lemmings because what played an absolute blinder back in the day is it still seventh heaven in 2022 and there's no point me giving it the third degree so I let my four-year-old and six-year-old daughter play it and they absolutely loved it plus I think it's probably the first time they ever used a mouse as you know it's all touchscreen these days even at school so not only did they get to play a good game a great game they also got a history lesson in retro gaming. Woohoo! Ah, the ultimate drive three sheets to the wind, whilst trying not to do a number on your spanking new Lotus Turbo. Now, it's a car on a road, it moves left and right. Occasionally, you'll have to overtake other vehicles. So, what's all the fuss about? Well, I personally think it's the first game since Outrun at the time. It gave us something to go up at. And on the Commodore Amiga, I think it revolutionized driving games. What's the point of a fighting game if there's no blood and guts? The creators of Mortal Kombat understood this, and because of that extreme violence, the franchise still survives today. Now, admittedly, this is a beat em up, but we still want that shock, horror, gore fest. I remember Renegade on the Amstrad CPC. It was a revelation when I found out that you could turn the blue blood red. So, a good game that's even better because of an on off gore option. Ah, New Zealand story. This game is incredibly cute. I think it's slightly more difficult than the arcade original, but that might just be me because Ocean have done a fantastic arcade conversion here. My wife sees me playing this game and she just thinks, what a big massive kid, but this is not a kid's game, this is for everyone. I'm just as fully immersed playing New Zealand Story as I am playing Halo Infinite. Wow, has anybody seen the Amstrad CPC port of this? It's truly magnificent. Naturally, it's not going to compete graphically uh, with the Amiga. I mean, just look at this, but it's got all the play. There was a PC version as well, but they messed up the graphics slightly. And even though the sound card was the superior sound blaster, for your own sanity alone, your best option was to turn the volume down low. And in my personal opinion, all these years on, this is still the best place to play computer pinball. I can't think of a better home computer platform than the Amiga for this game. The Amiga's color palette was made for this. Amiga Power in 1991 gave it 100%. Now I could have understood that score if it would have included a two player option, but as things stand, it's just an incredible, fantastic single player adventure. These days I play Kirby, Mario, Zelda, you name it, but the world needs more games like this. Games this difficult need funny moments. 
but I love the trial and error nature of this game. I can't understand why there's no Rick Dangerous 3. I literally grew up on this and the first game. And I remember being stuck at certain points and friends coming round to help and try and get to the next bit. My uncle came round in the end and managed to move us on a bit. So cued us there because it got the whole family involved and friends. And I love that it's more of the original and they didn't try to change things too much. When I first saw this game, I thought that's it, the future's arrived. The graphics can't get any better than this. The sound, the music, the fact that I'm playing an ocean game and it's Robocop. I was literally in my element. I didn't put this game down for about two or three weeks. And this wasn't even my game. I didn't even play it on my Amiga. It was on a mate's. In fact, his family must have felt like I'd moved in. The only other time that's happened where I've literally disappeared off the grid was when Command & Conquer came out. Can you believe it? Another arcade perfect. Well, to me, it feels arcade perfect. But Rodland is one of my favorite games in the arcade and definitely one of my favorite arcade conversions on the Commodore Amiga. I'm going to say it again. You didn't need a Super Nintendo or a Sega Mega Drive. The Commodore Amiga could match those systems. I really believe we screwed up letting the Japanese consoles invade our European shores. We should have continued down our own path and Japanese games like this would have continued to have been converted. Our type is like fine wine. The older it gets, the better it looks. And nowadays, even more, I really appreciate the game design. And I really appreciate the ZX Spectrum arcade conversion by Bob Pape and this Commodore Amiga conversion. I personally feel really lucky to have played and owned our type on the Commodore Amiga. And I don't want to hear any crap about the PC Engine version being superior. Oh, give the Amstrad CPC 128K version a go as well. There's only one way to better the original game, and that's to complement it. And you do that simply by more of. R-Type 2 plays much like the original, and that's no criticism. Gameplay remains much the same throughout, but all the levels are subtly different and pose new challenges. So R-Type 2 is a brilliant blast and every bit as good as the original. To sum up, two of the best games ever made and the Amiga has both of them. Oh God, I love this game. The graphics are beautifully rendered. Uh, the animation is as smooth and convincing as you could wish for. The nasties are really nasty, but just listen to that music, the thump of that music and the sound effects. Everything you'd want from a classic shoot 'em up is all packaged in here. And for those not in the know, guess what? This is a classic shoot 'em up. I'm not sure how popular this was back in the day, but give me this over a game of Sonic any day of the week. I've played many adventure type such as this on the Amiga, the PC and consoles. And I remember games such as Full Throttle and Blade Runner, uh, Police Quest, um, King's Quest, Sam and Max. There's even the Indiana Jones series and early Star Trek. And whilst all of those are great entertainment, this is the one that left me gobsmacked. The one that made me laugh the most, but probably the best computer adventure I've ever been on. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. This is probably the game I've played most of all video games, computer games, um, since I've been alive. Yes, I kid you not, I've put about 4,000 hours into this. Um, a close second would be Football Manager 2. <laughs> yes, I like my football games, although not FIFA. FIFA's too stressful. Plus, you don't feel like you're that 100% in control in the same way you do in this game. Come on, the lads! Better than Shinobi. Yes, I know the graphics aren't much to write home about, 
but it's the gameplay that survived the translation from the arcade original. There's nothing truly original about it. Yeah, it's a familiar formula, but still a damn fine action adventure. So ignore its 2D limits, and what you have is a damn fine platform game. If you haven't played it, you'll love it. I like to think there's a bit of ninja in all of us. When Shadow of the Beast appeared on the Amiga, it transformed graphics forever, and albeit difficult, became a cast iron classic. Playing this for the first time is an experience to be envied. There's all sorts of savage, unearthly monsters on the loose. It's nail-biting action from start to finish, and it builds the atmosphere brilliantly. Playing it, you get that feeling that this game couldn't have been done on any lesser machine than the Amiga. Ah, good old Speedball 2. Childish fun that will restore your faith in video games. This one made me laugh. Lots. Too bad taste for some, and it can get frustrating. Considering its scope, it does look fab. And there's loads of variety in the play. It's just about the most all-out fun game. I think I've ever played. It's not just armoured men colliding, there's war game level strategy involved. And it feels as authentic as sports games get. It's just a shame it's not real. I'm probably just easily impressed, but for me, this back in the day was visually groundbreaking and packed with blasting action. You'll absolutely love playing this the first couple of hours. But then, almost without warning, you're against the final boss. But despite that, it works brilliantly. And there's always tons going on. It's just one more go until you've completed it. You won't be able to stop. It's the most fun you can have on your Amiga, short of dating a page three girl. I absolutely love this game. I think it plays better on the Super Nintendo. But it's one of those games where you always feel that if you give it just one more try, you'll master that last corner. And if going fast appeals, you really should play this or own it. It's got to be in your collection. I love the super tight handling. There's no real decent crashes. Twat your shiny red sports car off a rock or another car in this game and it thuds and drives on. There's definitely a limited interaction with the scenery, but it's high speed racing that can be infuriating but it's always thrilling. Unlike the 8 bits, every surface in this game is bathed in colour. All the characters are there from the original with zippy dialogue. It's a masterful romp through some really beautiful scenery, and while it doesn't require much brain power or skill, it's big enough to keep you entertained for a while. And whilst it's not the best platform adventure game on the Amiga, you'll still love it. The Dizzy character is quite agile considering it's an egg. It's a cracking ball of fast-moving energy. <laughs> There's more crashes and scrapes than most top-down games you'll find on the Amiga, but this is still a solid title underneath. There's some mad racetracks, uh, and this is quite good looking. Uh, the handling's great, um, the landscapes look really good, and there's some tough races to be had. But seriously, just look at it, it zips along at a fair old pace. In fact, I prefer this one to supercars. There's all sorts of upgrades you can do to your brakes, the engine, turbo. I still come back to it all these years on. There's no place like Turrican. <laughs> This is another one I first played, had on the Amstrad CPC, and I loved it. I thought that was a fantastic port, but I have to say, this for me is the best. And I prefer this to the Commodore 64 version, but it's a wicked gun game, uh, and there's the potential to hide as well as shoot. It looks great, and it plays even better. I thought the Commodore 64 version looked a bit mucky looking. What can I say that hasn't already been said? Stunning looks, rock solid playability, bags of gameplay, and just listen to that iconic soundtrack. 
for me, the best shoot 'em up game in the world ever. And if you haven't played it, which I find that bizarre, it's much better than you'd expect. Can you imagine if somebody came up with a 3D version of this? Oh, and just a word of warning, just bashing the buttons, the fire buttons, to get through this fiasco won't work. I first played UN Squadron in the arcade. I uh, couldn't get enough of it. Coin after coin. It's not just one of my favourite games on the Amiga. It's one of my favourite games ever. And I think it's better than the Super Nintendo version as well. The arcade is the superior version. If you haven't played this, well, let me just say, it's up there with our type in my humble personal opinion and I can't stop playing the arcade original. Oh my god, I used to love playing this in the arcade. And it was really good, surprisingly good on the Amstrad CPC as well. But it's the Amiga version that feels arcade perfect. And whilst it's not the most complex of games, I love it. <laughs> Once you get used to the strange controls, uh, you'll really enjoy it. Uh, it's frenetic action here. It's Quake in tanks. <laughs> um, well, that wouldn't quite work. So, an early Twisted Metal for kids of today. Voodoo Nightmare is a huge challenge and there's spiders everywhere. It's good old fashioned searching and puzzling. It plays a little bit like Sabre Wolf, but within the isometric world. I paid less than, I think it was six quid for this back in the day. It was on budget and I still have it in the box. One of the things I remember about this is how fast it is. And on the Amiga monitor, the colors looked amazing. I remember being late to the party for Vroom. I went down the Nigel Mansell World Championship route with Gremlin Graphics but this is definitely the superior game and the one you needed to own back in the day on your Amiga in fact I prefer this to Super Monaco Grand Prix on the Sega Mega Drive although in fairness I probably played both games well invested far too many hours in, in, in both games This is another one I originally had on the Amstrad CPC, but it was a specy port. And when I finally found this one on the Amiga, well, if you're a rugby fan, you'll love it. I still play this one every now and again. And when I do, I'll sink about two or three hours into it. For me then, it's definitely the definitive rugby game. If you've had a tough day in the office, a tough day at work, and want to come home and relax, there's nothing better than playing Worms. So then, it's one of those games that has to be played to be properly appreciated, and not just played, you know, briefly. You've got to sink some time into it, and only then will it hook you. Look past the simple graphics, please. Everything about this game just works. It just feels so right. Oh, yeah. I think this was rated, uh, and don't quote me on this, but the best vertically scrolling shoot 'em up ever written. Initially, I found this really difficult, struggled to get the hang of it, but I think it was the music and the graphics that kept me going because I wanted to see more. The first game was absolutely brilliant, but this one, I think, personally trumps it in every single way. It was a sequel that lived up to the hype.
There's a whole lot more yeah. coming. The biggest unanswered question is where...
Commodore Amiga's answer to Sonic the Hedgehog. And this, for me, I mean, just look at that. But what happened to Zool, the character? My god, Gremlin Graphics were onto something here. He was far tougher than Sonic the Hedgehog, and he could punch. 
Well, for me, Zool is a masterpiece, and the second one apparently is even better. I never played it. Well, thanks for watching. This is another great trip down memory lane. I love doing these videos, and long may I continue. Until next time, bye!